That's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. Three minutes ago, a bombshell dropped that sent shockwaves rippling through the scientific community. Neil Armstrong, the first man to set foot on the moon, has come forward with a revelation that could shake the very foundations of our understanding of the universe. But what could lead a man hailed as a hero to challenge the narrative of one of humanity's greatest triumphs? What secrets lay hidden beneath the surface of that fateful mission? Join us as we dive deep into the archives of time, exploring the events that transpired three minutes ago when Neil Armstrong confirmed what we thought all along. Born on August 5, 1930, Neil Armstrong came into the world within proximity to where the Wright brothers, pioneers of aviation, once tinkered with their flying machines. He hailed from a lineage of German-English, Scots-Irish, and Scottish ancestry, born to Viola Louise and Stephen Kinnig Armstrong. Within his family, he shared adventures with a younger sister named June and a younger brother named Dean. The Armstrong family's life was marked by frequent moves, with Neil experiencing life in 16 different towns in just 14 years. However, amidst the shifting landscapes, his passion for flight soared. This love affair with the skies began at the tender age of two, when his father introduced him to the thrills of the Cleveland air races. By the time he was five or six, Neil's first flight in a Ford trimotor, dubbed the Tin Goose, ignited his dreams of soaring above the clouds. Remarkably, Neil earned his pilot's license at the age of 16, preceding even his driver's license. His journey into the world of aviation continued as he pursued aeronautical engineering at Purdue University on a naval scholarship. The Korean War briefly diverted his path, where he flew 78 combat missions, showcasing his courage and skill in the cockpit of an F-9 Panther jet. Upon completing his studies, Neil Armstrong joined the National Advisory Committee for Aeronautics, later known as NASA. His tenure as a test pilot at NASA's Flight Research Center in California solidified his reputation as one of the most daring aviators of his time. His nimble handling of various aircraft, including the legendary X-5 team, earned him accolades and paved the way for his transition into the elite cadre of NASA astronauts. At 1962, Neil Armstrong embarked on his astronaut training journey. Despite facing personal tragedy, with the loss of his daughter Karen to illness. Focusing on his work, he immersed himself in preparations for NASA's Gemini program, which aimed to advance space exploration. His medal was tested during the Gemini 8 mission when a malfunction threatened their spacecraft. Through swift thinking and steady hands, Armstrong averted disaster, showcasing his calm under pressure. His final frontier awaited as he assumed command of Apollo 11 the historic mission that would etch his name into the annals of human achievement forever. The announcement came on 1967, November 20th, marking the start of a journey that would etch their names in history. Neil Armstrong, Jim Lovell, and Buzz Aldrin were named as the backup crew for Apollo 9. Lovell and Aldrin had already ventured together into space aboard Gemini 12, forging a bond amidst the vastness of the universe. However, Fate took a twist as delays in the lunar module pushed Apollo 8 and Apollo 9 into a dance of crew rotations. Armstrong's team found themselves as the backup for Apollo 8 instead. It was widely anticipated that Armstrong would lead Apollo 11, but destiny had a detour planned. A setback struck when Michael Collins, the command module pilot of Apollo 8, faced a medical challenge with his legs. Lovell stepped in while Collins underwent surgery. As Collins recuperated, he joined Armstrong's crew, reshuffling the lineup. Meanwhile, Fred Hayes and Aldrin filled the backup roles for Apollo 8. The stage was set for Apollo 11, the second American mission to feature a crew with prior spaceflight experience, following in the footsteps of Apollo 10 and preceding STS-26 in 1988. During preparations, Deakey Slayton presented Armstrong with a choice replace Aldrin with Lovell due to some concerns about Aldrin's compatibility. Armstrong pondered, acknowledging Aldrin's quirks, but ultimately decided to stay loyal to his team. He believed in Lovell's leadership, affirming his place as commander. Yet, 
Unlike the jovial camaraderie of Apollo 12, the atmosphere within the Apollo 11 crew was more distant, lacking the same warmth and closeness. Each member carried their burdens and dreams, united by a common goal, to leave footprints on the moon. Instead, they formed a friendly working bond. Armstrong, especially, was known for keeping to himself. But Collins, who saw himself as a bit of a loner, admitted to turning down Aldrin's efforts to get closer. Aldrin and Collins described their crew as friendly yet distant acquaintances. Armstrong disagreed, saying all his teams worked together smoothly. On July 16, 1969, the Saturn V rocket launched from Florida, watched by millions on TV. Four days later, Armstrong and Aldrin left the command moduli for Eagle, prepping for lunar descent. At 5.44 in the noon, Eagle separated from Columbia. Collins, alone on Columbia, checked the Eagle's condition as it spun, ensuring its safety. Armstrong noted the Eagle's likeness to wings. During descent, Armstrong and Aldrin passed landmarks early, signaling they were off course. The Eagle was too fast. The issue might have been Maskin's, areas of the moon's crust with unusual gravitational pulls altering the Eagle's path. Flight director Kran suggested it might have been due to air pressure or Eagle's maneuver. Five minutes into descent, 6,000 feet above the moon, the LM guidance computer alarmed with 1201 and 1202. Jack Garman, a computer engineer, assured it was safe to continue, relieving the crew. These alarms indicated the computer was overloaded, delaying tasks. Margaret Hamilton, who oversaw the computer programming for Apollo, flights at MIT's Charles Stark Draper Laboratory, remembered a crucial moment during the lunar landing. When Neil Armstrong peered out of the spacecraft again, he noticed that the designated landing spot was cluttered with boulders near a sizable crater. This spot, later identified as the West Crater, prompted Armstrong to take manual control of the landing process. Armstrong contemplated landing short of the boulder-strewn area to gather geological samples, but their horizontal speed was too high for such a maneuver. As they descended, Buzz Aldrin provided navigation data while Armstrong focused on guiding the Eagle lander. With their fuel running low and the urgency to find a suitable landing site increasing, Armstrong spotted a relatively clear patch of ground and directed the spacecraft toward it. However, as they descended closer to the surface, Armstrong noticed a crater in their chosen spot. Skillfully maneuvering to avoid it, he identified another level area for landing. With the surface rapidly approaching and fuel running critically low, Armstrong had to navigate carefully through lunar dust kicked up by the lander's engine. Using large rocks as reference points, he gauged their speed in descent. A signal from a light indicator informed Aldrin that one of the landing probes had touched the lunar surface, prompting Armstrong to initiate the engine shutdown. However, in the heat of the moment, he momentarily forgot this crucial step, risking a potential explosion due to engine exhaust pressure reflecting off the lunar surface. Just moments after, Eagle touched down softly and Armstrong powered off the engine. Apollo 11 relied on a special kind of television called slow scan TV, which couldn't be directly broadcast like regular TV. Instead, it appeared on a unique screen, which was then captured by a regular TV camera. This created a kind of double broadcast, making the picture quality not as sharp as it could have been. The signal traveled all the way to Goldstone in the United States, but it was received with clearer detail at the Honeysuckle Creek tracking station near Canberra, Australia. Shortly after, the transmission was switched to the more sensitive Parks radio telescope, also in Australia. Despite facing some technical and weather-related challenges, grainy images of the first moonwalk were beamed back to Earth and shared with an audience of at least 600 million people. While copies of this historic footage in broadcast format have been preserved and widely circulated, the original slow-scan transmissions from the lunar surface were likely lost due to NASA's routine practice of reusing magnetic tapes. When Columbia splashed down, it flipped upside down. And people. In Los Angeles, 
there was a fancy dinner attended by top officials and ambassadors from many countries. President Nixon and Vice President Agnew gave each astronaut the Presidential Medal of Freedom. Later, the astronauts visited Congress and presented American flags they had taken to the moon. Their achievement was celebrated worldwide with a 38-day tour to 22 countries. They traveled from Mexico City to Tokyo, stopping in major cities like Paris, London, and Sydney. It was a whirlwind adventure that showcased their historic journey to the moon. Many people think the moon landing didn't happen, and one of them is Joe Rogan, a well-known podcaster. He believes the flag planted on the moon seemed to be fluttering, even though there's no wind in space. Some say the flag was rigged with wires and a fan, and the whole thing was filmed on Earth. This suggests NASA might have faked the landing to trick everyone and beat the Soviet Union in the space race. Neil Armstrong, the first man on the moon, even left NASA afterward fueling the conspiracy. Another twist came from a former Rocket Dyne employee claiming insider info that the moon landing was a sham. Rogan isn't alone in his beliefs. Many others doubt the moon landing too. They wonder why there are no stars in the photos and why Armstrong's reflection appears in Buzz Aldrin's visor without a visible camera. It's suspicious that only two people supposedly went on the trip, raising doubts about NASA's honesty. Some pictures from the moon landing show objects in shadow, which doubters say wouldn't happen if only sunlight was around. They suggest special Hollywood lighting was used. Even a famous photo with a C on a moon rock raises eyebrows, implying that some moon rocks might be props. NASA insists these are all misunderstandings or glitches, but it only deepens the doubt about their credibility. Some people doubt if the pictures from the moon landing are genuine. They wonder about the shadows in the photos, noting that the lengths of the shadows cast by astronauts seem inconsistent, even when they're standing close together. These doubters suggest that perhaps the lighting was rigged on a stage somewhere, and NASA missed the discrepancies. Some doubters even suggest that thin wires suspended the astronauts to simulate low gravity on the moon, and then the footage was slowed down to make it look like they were floating. Some of these doubters have gone so far as to make their wire systems, film themselves, and slow down the footage to compare with NASA's videos. Joe Rogan isn't the only one who questions the moon landing. There were doubters before him, which might have weighed on Neil Armstrong's conscience. It's speculated that Armstrong couldn't bear the lie anymore, leading him to step back from NASA. After leaving NASA, some astronauts, like Glenn and Harrison Schmidt from Apollo 17, pursued political careers. Armstrong was also approached by political parties but declined, advocating for states' rights and opposing the U.S. acting as a global enforcer. Armstrong's religious beliefs caused tension with his family, as he identified as a deist. Despite this, he thanked Congress for the opportunity to witness the wonders of the universe during his famous speech upon returning from the moon. The day Apollo 11 landed on the moon was a momentous occasion broadcast live on television, marking a milestone in American history. However, what many people don't realize is that Neil Armstrong's radio transmission encountered a hiccup due to overheating, causing the first two minutes after his landing to go unheard. Yet, isn't it interesting to ponder what Armstrong experienced when he took that historic step onto the lunar surface? Although the Apollo team on Earth couldn't hear his initial words, they were recorded. And later, when the audio was finally received, it stunned everyone. Armstrong's exact words were, These babies are huge, sir. Enormous. Oh God, he wouldn't believe it. He tells him there are other spacecraft out here, lined up on the far side of the crater's edge. They're on the moon watching us. The revelation of Armstrong's encounter with unidentified flying objects above the moon adds a fascinating layer to the story. Murray Chang, a former chief of NASA communication systems, disclosed this information, supported by his book on Armstrong's credibility. Despite the significance of his sighting, Armstrong was never permitted to publicly share his observations. Everything was kept classified, and the tapes were conveniently misplaced after his demise. Interestingly, Neil Armstrong's belief in extraterrestrial life further adds to the interest. 
Despite his monumental achievement in space exploration, Armstrong's son, Mark, revealed that his father held a belief in aliens. Mark recalls his father's response to a question about extraterrestrial life. It would be arrogant not to. Armstrong viewed the universe as vast and filled with mysteries, believing that humans knew very little about it. He considered the possibility of other life forms beyond Earth highly probable, emphasizing the humility required in contemplating our place in the universe. In the 1980s, there was a false rumor that Armstrong converted to Islam after hearing the call to prayer on the moon. This rumor spread through a song and various news outlets, confusing for decades until the U.S. State Department clarified that it was untrue. Armstrong had a passion for flying, enjoying gliders, and earning accolades from the International Gliding Commission before his lunar mission. Even in his later years, he continued to fly engineless aircraft. Tragically, he suffered an accident on his farm in 1978, losing part of his left ring finger in a mishap with his grain truck. He carefully gathered the severed tip, wrapping it in ice to preserve it, then rushed to a nearby hospital in Louisville, Kentucky, where surgeons skillfully reattached it. In February 1991, he experienced a mild heart attack while skiing in Aspen, Colorado, with his friends. Concerning his health and eventual passing, Armstrong underwent a surgical procedure known as bypass surgery at Mercy Faith Fairfield Hospital in Cincinnati on August 7, 2012, to address his coronary artery disease. Despite initial reports of a smooth recovery, complications arose, and he passed away on August 25 at the age of 82. In response to his death, President Barack Obama paid tribute to Armstrong, hailing him as not only one of the greatest American heroes of his era, but of all time. Obama emphasized that Armstrong embodied the hopes and dreams of the American people, leaving an indelible mark on human history. Reflecting on Armstrong's legacy, his family described him as a humble American hero who served his country with pride, first as a Navy fighter pilot, then as a test pilot and astronaut. While grieving his loss, they celebrated his extraordinary life and urged young people worldwide boundaries and dedicating themselves to noble causes beyond personal gain. For those wondering how to honor Neil, they have a simple suggestion. Honor his way of serving, achieving great things, and staying humble. Buzz Aldrin praised Armstrong as a true American hero and the best pilot he ever knew. He expressed regret that they couldn't celebrate the 50th anniversary of the moon landing together in the 2019. Michael Collins, another astronaut, described Armstrong as the best and said he'd miss him greatly. NASA Administrator Charles Bolden remarked that Neil Armstrong's name would always be remembered in history books for that monumental first step into another world. In July 2019, as the 50th anniversary celebrations took place, the New York Times shared news of a medical malpractice lawsuit filed by Armstrong's family against Mercy Health Fairfield Hospital, where he passed away. Notably, Armstrong's wife, Carol, wasn't involved in the lawsuit, feeling it went against her husband's wishes. Neil Armstrong's legacy is truly remarkable. His contributions to aerospace engineering and exploration earned him a spot in the National Academy of Engineering in 1978. His footprints are forever etched in history, his legacy shining brightly like gold. He became a member of the American Philosophical Society in 2001, a prestigious group of thinkers and scholars. In 1999, Armstrong and his fellow Apollo 11 crew members were honored with the Langley Gold Medal by the Smithsonian Institution, recognizing their remarkable achievement in space exploration. On April 18, 2006, NASA bestowed upon him the Ambassador of Exploration Award, acknowledging his role as an ambassador for space exploration and inspiration. In 2013, the Space Foundation recognized Armstrong's lifetime contributions to space exploration by presenting him with the General James E. Hill Lifetime Space Achievement Award. Armstrong's legacy extends to numerous prestigious recognitions, including induction into the Aerospace Walk of Honor, the International Space Hall of Fame, the National Aviation Hall of Fame, 
and the United States Astronaut Hall of Fame. He received his Naval Astronaut Badge in a special ceremony aboard the USS Dwight D. Eisenhower on March 10, 2010, in the presence of fellow astronauts Lovell and Cernan. Several landmarks bear Armstrong's name, including the lunar crater Armstrong, located 31 miles from the Apollo 11 landing site, and asteroid 6469 Armstrong. Additionally, many schools, streets, buildings, and other locations around the globe honor him and the Apollo mission. The Armstrong Air and Space Museum in his hometown of Wapakoneta, as well as the Neil Armstrong Airport in New Knoxville, Ohio, pays tribute to his monumental achievements. Furthermore, Armstrong's influence extends to the scientific community, with the minerals Armstrongite and Armalkalite named after him, highlighting his impact on geological studies. In proof of his alma mater's pride, Purdue University named its new engineering building Neil Armstrong Hall of Engineering on October 2004, officially dedicated on October 27, 2007, in the presence of Armstrong and 14 other Purdue astronauts, celebrating his enduring legacy in the field of engineering and space exploration. What are your thoughts on Neil Armstrong's confirmation about what we thought all along? Let us have your opinions in the comments below. Thanks for watching another episode of Voyager. While you are still here, make sure to click the video on your screen for more quality content.